Whatever the paper numbers say, everyone here knows a monster has been unleashed in our land. In my own case, after enjoying nearly two decades of Florida peace tucked away in a quiet corner of Maitland, the press of traffic was becoming intolerable every time my wife and I set foot outside the door. We found new quiet just a half hour north in Sanford, leading a friend to comment at the time, sure, only way to keep ahead of things in Florida is to keep pushing north. Do you remember the story about killing the goose that laid the golden egg? To a kid, that little fable sounds plain silly. Imagine doing away with a live, irreplaceable treasure generator in order to get at all the gold all at once. If only we could see our own r ruinous greed through eyes just that clear and innocent. If only we had just that much common sense. So how did growth become the monster that ravishes our land? First off, it's true. Contrary to expectations and contrary to our own best interests even, we have not been showing up like we should before comp plans are adopted in our municipalities and counties. More about that in a moment. Even so, it's not often that our elected representatives see a development they can't approve. Could be that's because they're swayed by the swell of all those promised taxes. On the other hand, developers are not known for holding back their support of local candidates. So what do you know? Typically, applications for changes to the comp plan do not get turned down very often. Meantime, the state's Department of Community Affairs was never given the authority it needed to do much effective overseeing of our comp plans. In fact, Governor Chris just signed into law a provision for easing up on the state's controls on development. We'll talk more about that. About that poor showing of ours at City Hall, state law requires our input when comp plans are being discussed and drawn up. Sadly, most of us just don't put in the hours at City Hall to fully hear them out. Why is that? Citizens themselves making these decisions? Are you crazy? They don't even care enough to show up. But people do care when development schemes get close to where people live. And when it comes to scheduling those hearings for citizen input, City Hall typically acts more like a formal courtroom of opposing sides than any sort of friendly place open for community involvement. Speak your three minutes and sit down. Meantime, developers and their supporters relish the idea of one isolated group of citizens passing off their problems on another, NIMBY, scornfully uttered with a comforting wink. Why, that's presumed to be the last word sealing any further argument by noisy neighborhood protesters. The prospect of local groups discovering one another coming together to oppose a common threat to a treasured way of life here in Florida, well, that's just too scary for these smug commentators to contemplate. Florida hometown democracy is giving a strong united voice to voters awake to the threat overdevelopment poses to the larger neighborhood of our entire home peninsula. So watch that much vaunted voter apathy to which vested interests love to point. It evaporates altogether when we voters recognize our vital interests are at stake and believe we have the means to act on them. The result of all this construction activity in our state, mistermed development, Let's start with those much promised additions to the tax rolls of development schemes. Somehow they never do, in fact, offset their extra uh, burdens as municipality after municipality struggles to provide the needed new public services. Ask anyone who's grown up here in Florida, as my wife herself can tell you, the very ground under one's feet has been moving and less and less is it colored green. Our vast underground reservoir that that intricately webbed limestone aquifer has been under formidable mounting attack. We are learning that it is not invulnerable, nor is it inexhaustible. A recent analysis by the Nature Conservancy finds that projected residential growth in the state by 2020 will result in the polluting development of two to three million acres of precious aquifer recharge lands. So instead of being enhanced, as we are led to believe with that rosy euphemism, development, the quality of life here in Florida has been unarguably, manifestly, steadily declining over the past few generations. No one denies it. 
And now what about this morning on I-4? Recently, two Florida cities made it to the top 10 of America's most expensive commutes. A typical Tampa resident gave over just over 20% of his annual household cost in 2007 to commuting, adding 40 extra hours a year to his life. In Miami, the dollar figure was about the same, but commuting was accounting for just over 50 hours a year of a typical resident's life. And now this. In the last five years, those 25,000 housing starts per month dropped to about 2,000, making Florida number one in the country for home mortgage foreclosures and delinquencies. Sure, the real estate uh, bubble was a big part of it, people overextending themselves to own property, but as everyone knows, not everyone was buying a home for themselves to live in. Even so, flipping wasn't the whole story either. Developers and their mortgage lending cohorts were clearly pushing the leading edge of all that frenzy, guaranteeing the ugly spectacle today everywhere in evidence of a land grossly overbuilt. Tallahassee's latest response to the crisis gut the Growth Management Act. Late last year, Governor Chris signed the Community Renewal Act, so-called. The new law re rewrites Florida's 25-year-old model growth management tradition by allowing developers in the most urban counties to add more housing without expanding roads. At the time, the Florida Chamber of Commerce was heard to wax ecstatic, and so did the Florida Association of Realtors. Well, let's step back for a moment. Have you been watching that beautiful National Park series on public TV by Ken Burns? It's the same old story on a national scale. Massive corporate greed pitted against the passion and urgings of a single far-seeing individual who somehow does the impossible and changes the direction of a whole people. An unpredictable story that inspires as often as it's told. In his beautiful series, Ken Burns introduces us to John Muir, naturalist, poet, lone explorer of vast tracts of unspoiled land out west. Muir moved the nation to preserve what he found from the ravages of the developer. Listen to these words of his, what he might well be saying to the modern Floridian. You are going on a strange journey, my friend. I don't envy you. You'll have a hard time keeping your heart light and simple in the midst of this crowd of madmen. Keep close to nature's heart yourself. Break clear away once in a while. Wash your spirit clean of this sordid, gold-seeking crowd in God's pure air. Don't lose your freedom and your love of the earth as God made it. Now, what if our entire beautiful peninsula itself were thought of as a place to be preserved? Not so much as a national park for that occasional visit, that all-too-rare spiritual uplift, but for the sake of our very hearth and home, the place where we want most to live. Can we do it? So just how would it work, this Amendment 4? Amendment 4 adds a last step to whatever changes to its comp plan City Hall may be thinking of approving. Namely, voting residents will be invited to certify those changes. In this way, the ballot box itself is our democratic guarantor of last resort for the integrity of our land use plans. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? So where's the beef? Click on our concluding section. <laughs>